Good afternoon, class. I hope everyone has had a chance to review the PowerPoint for Chapter 14. I'm going to go over some key points for Chapter 14. So the learning objectives are explain how to account for cash dividends, stock dividends, and stock splits. Discuss how stockholders' equity is reported on and analyzed. And describe the form and content of corporation income statements. Learning objective one, explain how to account for cash dividends, stock dividends, and stock splits. So distribution of cash or stock to stockholders on a pro rata proportion of the ownership basis. Uh, types of dividends, cash, property, stock, and script, which is a promissory note. So cash dividends. For a corporation to pay a cash dividend, it must have retained earnings, adequate cash, and a declaration of dividends by the board of directors. So retained earnings or payment of cash dividends from retained earnings is legal in all states. So there are three important dates. The declaration date, which the board authorizes the dividends, and an illustration is showing that it's the 1st of December. Then you have a record date. The registered shareholders are eligible for dividends. This is when they go in and check the records on who actually owns the stock as of this date, the 22nd. Then you have a payment date. The company issues dividend checks on the 20th. So illustration on December 1st, the directors of Media General declared a 50 cents per share cash dividend on the 100,000 shares of $10 par value common stock. The dividend is payable on January 20th to shareholders of record on December 22nd, just like our just like our calendar. So here the journal entry you have cash dividends at 50 cents, 100,000 shares, which is $50,000 is debited. You're going to credit dividends payable at $50,000. This is December 1st when the board declared the dividend. On December 22nd, when I identify the shareholders that own the stocks, there's no entry to be made. On January 20th, when they actually made the payment, you're going to debit dividends payable and credit cash when you actually make the payment. So these are the three dates, December 1st, December 22nd, and December 20th. When the dividend is declared, you're going to debit cash dividends, credit the payable. When the dividend, when they identify who owns the dividend, who owns the um, shares, December 22nd, no entry is required. And when the dividends are actually paid out, you're going to debit the payable that you originally credited and you're going to credit cash. So dividend preferences, uh, preferred stock, preferred stockholders have the right to receive dividends before common stockholders. Per share dividend amount is stated as a percentage of the preferred stock par value or as a specified amount. Cumulative dividends, preferred stockholders must be paid both current year dividends and any unpaid prior year dividends before common stockholders receive dividends. Typically, sometimes companies um, don't pay out their dividends. And so when they do decide to pay it out, the preferred stockholders that have cumulative dividends must be paid. So here, cumulative dividend scientific leasing has 5,000 shares of 7% $100 par value cumulative preferred stock outstanding. Each 100 shares pays a $7 dividend. The annual dividend is $35,000. So that's the 5,000 times the $7 per share. If dividends are two years in arrears, which means they have not paid them out yet, preferred stockholders are entitled to receive the following dividends. And so the dividends in arrears are the $35,000 for two years, which is $70,000. Then they also receive the current year's $35,000 dividend, which is a total of $105,000 are going to be pay, is going to be paid out in dividends for that for that year. So again, $35,000 times two, which are the two years they have not paid out that were in the in arrears, then the current year's dividend of 35 because they've decided to pay this year. So now that they're paying, they have to pay what was be, what was accrued for the last two years and now the total dividends for this year. Allocating cash dividends between preferred and common stock. Holders of cumulative preferred stock must be paid any unpaid prior year dividends and, and their current year's dividend before common stockholders receive dividends. So as we just seen in the previous slide, these, this represents the prior year dividends haven't been paid the current year, and then um, together it's 105. And so anything over that would then go to common stock 
holders. So illustration, on December 31st, IBR Incorporated has 1,000 shares of 8%, $100 par value, cumulative preferred stock. It also has 50,000 shares of $10 par value, common stock outstanding. At December 31st, 2020, the directors declare a $6,000 cash dividend. Calculate the annual preferred dividend. So here they're asking to prepare the entry to record a declaration of the dividend. And so, and so this year, what they should have received was eight thousand dollars it's a thousand shares at eight percent a hundred dollars par so eight thousand dollars is what they should re what should have received this year but instead they only did a six dollar six thousand dollar cash dividend so they're gonna on December 31st they're gonna debit cash dividends for six thousand and credit dividends payable for six thousand So even though eight thousand was the calculation, six thousand is all they declared to pay. So now the same company at December thirty first, twenty twenty one, which is the next year, IBR declares a fifty thousand dollar cash dividend. Prepare to entry to record the declaration of the dividend. So here again, you're going to debit cash dividends for what was declared. You're going to credit dividends payable for the fifty thousand that was that's going to be paid out. Just like in a previous entry with the 6000 So at December 31st, 2021, IBR declares the same $50,000 cash dividend we're dealing with. They want to show the allocation of the dividends to each class of stock. And so they declared $50,000 total dividend. How you're going to allocate it. So allocate it to preferred stock. Dividends in arrears. So remember, they were owed $2,000 from the previous year, from 2020. Because they only received eight. They only received $6,000 of the 8,000 they should have received. So this is the 2,000 that they were owed in arrears. Now they're receiving 8,000 for this year, 1,000 times the $8 for the 2021 dividend, which is a total of 10,000. Once you subtract the 10,000, what's left over is allocated to common stock, which is the 40,000. So dividends on preferred in common stock, Mastermind Corporation has 2,000 shares of 6%, $100 par value preferred stock outstanding at December 31st, 2020. At December 31st, 2020, the company declared a $60,000 cash dividend. Determine the dividend paid to preferred stockholders and common stockholders under each of the following scenarios. So here they're going to kind of run through the different scenarios of preferred stock and common stock so you can get a feel for how, you sh how they should be treated. So the first scenario, the preferred stock is non-cumulative and the company has not missed any dividends in previous years. So if the preferred stock is non-cumulative, that means they're, they're not owed anything even if they didn't pay in the previous years. So preferred stock holders are paid only this year's dividend. Preferred stock holders dividend is the 2,000 shares at 6% at $100 par value, which is $12,000. Common stockholders receive forty-eight thousand, which is the sixty thousand that was told that was declared in total, less the twelve thousand that goes to preferred stockholders. Which so the remaining is forty-eight thousand. The total here is sixty thousand dollars. Scenario two: preferred stock is non-cumulative, and the company did not pay a dividend in each of the two previous years. So past unpaid dividends do not have to be paid. Preferred stockholders is $12,000, 2,000, 6%, $100 par value. Common stockholders, common stockholders, same thing, 48000 to 60000 minus to $12,000. The third scenario, preferred stock is cumulative, and the company did not pay a dividend in each of the two previous years. So it's very important to notice that they're saying the preferred stock is cumulative in this, in this scenario. So since it's cumulative, dividends that have been missed, arrears must be paid. So preferred stock the third is $36,000. That's the 2,000 shares times 6% at $100 par for three years. The two previous years, they, they were not paid. They were arrears and the current year. Now common stockholders received $24,000. That's the original $60,000 that was declared minus the 36,000 that was paid out to the preferred stockholders. And again, the total is 60,000. 
a pro rata proportional to ownership distribution of the corporation's own stock to stockholders. So reasons why corporations issue stock dividends. So here they're issuing a stock dividend instead of a cash dividend. They do it to satisfy stockholders' dividend expectations without spending cash. They increase marketability of corporation stock and they emphasize a portion of stockholders' equity has been permanently reinvested in the business. So you have a small stock dividend and a large stock dividend. So less the small stock is less than 20 to 25% of the corporation issue stock and is recorded at fair market value. Accounting based on the assumption that the small stock dividend will have a little effect on market price of outstanding shares. The large stock dividend, however, is greater than 20 to 25% of issued stock recorded at par value. So with the large stock, you're going to use par value as opposed to using the fair market value in the small stock dividend. So here's the illustration. Midland Corporation declares a 10% stock dividend on its 50,000 shares of $10 par value common stock. The current fair market value of its stock is $15 per share. Record the entry on the declaration date. So a stock dividend, 50,000 at 10%. Times fifteen dollars is seventy-five thousand dollars. You're going to credit common stock dividends distributable for fifty thousand, and credit paid-in capital excess of par of common stock for the difference for twenty-five thousand. Record a journal entry when Medland issues the dividend shares, and so when they actually make the payout. You're going to debit common stock dividends distributable, and you're going to credit common stock. So effects of stock dividends. Uh, here's an illustration to show you bef um, before for the stockholders equity section. Before the dividend, the change, and then after the dividend. Now notice the, thing, the things that changed here um, are the outstanding shares. So now you have 55,000 outstanding, but everything else pretty much stays the same. Which of the following statements about small stock dividends is true? And so here, again, they want to test that you understand that market price per share should be assigned to the dividend shares, not the par value. So stock splits, issuance of additional shares to stockholders according to their percentage of ownership, reduction in power or stated value of per share, increased numbers of shares outstanding, reduces market value of shares, and no journal entry is recorded, no effect on any balance sheet in the stock, any balance in the stockholders' equity. Um, stock split just increases the number of shares of stock that are outstanding. Um, this is done for a management reason for, for many different types of reasons, like we just stated. An effect of, this is an effect of a four to one stock split for stockholders. So before the split, they owned four shares. After the stock split, these shares um, multiply based on the split, but their ownership stayed the same. They still own the same value in this kind of illustration to show you if they own a quarter of the business, it's still the same quarter of the business. So the number of shares owned increases, but the percentage of company owned remains the same. Sometimes companies do this to uh, make their stock more marketable. If they feel like the price is too high, if you have stock, if the stock is going for $100, if they split it, then it's $50 for two shares instead of 100 for one share. Um, and you also have things that they, right now, what I discussed, but you have reverse stock, split, stock splits where the share could be going for $50 and decide they want to... Um, only have a certain type of clientele. So they make the stock $100 by doing a reverse split. Learning objective two, discuss how stockholders equity is reported and analyzed. Uh, retained earnings is net income that a company retains in the business. Part of stockholders claim on assets of the corporation, a debit balance is identified as a deficit. And so here is the balance sheet portion of stockholders equity. And they're just giving an example of a deficit in retained earnings. How it would look as a, a negative. Retained earnings restrictions. Uh, restrictions can result from legal restrictions, contractual restrictions, voluntary restrictions. Uh, Textatronic Incorporated notes to the financial statement. 
This is an example where it states certain of the company's debt arrangements require compliance with debt covenants. Management believes that the company is in compliance with such requirements. The company had unrestricted retained earnings of $223.8 million after meeting those requirements. Prior period adjustments, a correction of an error in a previous issued financial statement. Uh, results from mathematical mistakes, mistakes in application of accounting principles, and oversight or misuse of facts. Adjustments made to beginning balance of retained earnings. So here we have Woods Incorporated statement of retained earnings for the year ended December 31st, 2020. Uh, before issuing the report for the year ended December 31, 2020, you discovered a $50,000 error net of tax that caused the 2019 inventory to be overstated. Um, overstated inventory, like we know, causes the cost of goods sold to be lower and thus net income to be higher, which would, which would, would this discovery have any impact on the reporting of the statement of retained earnings for 2020? And so here they're showing you um, the adjustment in the same section. You're going to have the $50,000 adjustment for prior period adjustment error correction. This is how you were presented. So the journal entry is going to be a debit to retained earnings and a credit to inventory. And so in essence, you're reducing your retained earnings for the overstatement in income. So here, um, retained earnings, debit and credits to retained earnings. When you would debit or credit retained earnings, retained earnings should normally have a credit balance. So if you have a net loss, you're going to debit retained earnings. Any prior period adjustment for overstatement of income is going to require a debit. Cash dividends and stock dividends, a debit. And some disposal of treasury stock. You will credit retained earnings when um, you're recognizing net income or a prior period adjustment for understatement of net income. So ratios, um, payout ratio. There measures a percentage of earnings of a company's dist distributes in form of cash dividends to common stockholders. To illustrate, Nike dividends were recently 821 million and net income was uh, 2,693 million. And so to calculate the payout ratio, the formula is cash dividends declared on common stock divided by net income gives you your payout ratio. And so here was 821 divided by the 2,693 equals 30%, 30.5%. Return on common stockholders' equity is another ratio. It indicates how many dollars of net income the company earned for each dollar invested by common stockholders. So Walt Disney Company's beginning and ending common stockholders' equity were 31,820 and 30,753 million, respectively. Net income was 4,687 million, no preferred stock. And so here, the calculation is net income minus preferred dividends divided by average common stockholders equity. And so the average stockholders equity, you can add them together and divide it by two. And then it's gonna give you the return on common stockholders equity which is 15%. And so the average is made up of the, of the beginning and ending stockholders equity. So here we have uh, Sienna Corporation purchased 2,000 shares of treasury stock. Other information regarding Sienna Company Corporation is provided below. So they provide us with a net income, dividends on preferred stock, dividends on common stock, our common stockholders equity at the beginning of the year, at the ending of the year, and then they identified there was an adjustment for purchasing treasury stock. So compute return on common stockholders equity for each year. And so here for 2019, you're gonna take the 110,000 minus, which is your net income, and subtract dividends on preferred stock. Then you take your beginning and ending common stockholders equity divided by two, Divide these two figures and to come up with 20% in 2020. Same formula. Net income minus dividends and preferred stock divided by the beginning and ending common stock divided by two, and it gives you 25%. So 
So that's the end of these key points. Um, make sure to review the full PowerPoint. Uh, the password letter for the quiz is C. Um, these ratios are, are important. So make sure you go through the slide and copy down these ratios so you can remember and, and you can um, remember how to apply them. Uh, good luck on the quiz.